was born on the 26th of May, 1867, in Kensington Palace. She was the only daughter of Prince Francis, Duke of Teck, and Princess Mary Adelaide of Cambridge, a granddaughter of George III of the United Kingdom. Mary was born in the same room as her cousin, Queen Victoria, had been over 48 years earlier. Her parents named her after Queen Victoria with Mary's first name actually being Victoria. Mary was the eldest of four children and had a happy but strict upbringing. She learned to be discreet, firm and tactful in order to resolve her three brothers' arguments. The children played with the children of the Prince of Wales, who was in age to them. Mary and her family lived in Kensington Palace and White Lodge, granted to them by the Queen. While her brothers were educated at boarding school, Mary was educated by her mother and governess at home. Her parents were not wealthy and often lived abroad with a small staff to economise. Mary grew to be fluent in English, German and French. In 1885, Mary and her family returned to London. By this time, Mary had become her mother's unofficial secretary and helped her mother to organise parties. In 1886, Mary debuted in society and being the only unmarried British princess who was not a descendant of Queen Victoria made her a desirable candidate for Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale, the eldest son of the Prince of Wales. In 1891, Albert proposed to Mary and she accepted Unfortunately, Albert Victor died only weeks later of pneumonia. Albert's brother George, Duke of York, became close to Mary and proposed to her in 1893. That same year, in July, the couple were wed. They were deeply in love with each other and were never unfaithful. They had six children together, Edward, Albert, Mary, Henry, George and John. The couple lived in York Cottage and in St. James's Palace. They led a simple, quiet life. Their children were cared for by a nanny, which was normal for upper-class families. However, the nannies they hired ended up abusing the children and were promptly fired. Eventually, the affectionate and much-loved Charlotte Bell was hired as the children's nanny. Mary and George were quite distant and cold towards their children, but they did love them very dearly. As Duke and Duchess of York, the couple carried out a variety of public duties in support of the Queen. On the 22nd of January 1901, Queen Victoria died and Mary's father-in-law ascended the throne as Edward VII. For the rest of 1901, George and Mary toured the British Empire something no royal had ever done before. The king and queen took care of their children while they were away. In November, George was created Prince of Wales with Mary as Princess of Wales. They moved into Marble House. On the 6th of May, 1910, Edward VII died and George became George V with Mary as his queen consort. Mary decided to drop her first name and became known as Queen Mary. She was the first British Queen consort to be born in Britain since Catherine Parr. On the 22nd of June 1911, the King and Queen were crowned together in Westminster Abbey. And on the 12th of December 1911, they were crowned Emperor and Empress at the Delhi Durbar in India. While Mary and her mother-in-law Queen Alexandra were on friendly terms, Alexandra was stubborn and demanded that she take precedence over Mary at the funeral of Edward VII. She also kept some of the royal jewels, which should have passed on to Mary as the new queen. During the First World War, Mary instituted austerity measures at the palace. Food was rationed and she visited wounded and dying servicemen in hospitals. In 1917, the royal house's surname was changed to the English-sounding Windsor, as anti-German feeling ran high in Britain. Two months after the war, Queen Mary's youngest child, John, died at the age of 13. His death caused immense shock and sorrow for his parents. The couple became closer and Mary continued to be 
of great support for her husband in the later half of his reign. She offered him much advice and was a calming presence for the king. From the late 1920s, George fell ill numerous times with lung problems. Mary nursed him when he was sick. In 1935, George V celebrated his Silver Jubilee and paid tribute to his wife in his speech. On the 20th of January 1936, George V died. Their eldest son, Edward, ascended the throne as Edward VIII. Mary was then known as just Queen Mary. By the end of the year, Edward had abdicated and Mary's second son, Albert, had ascended the throne as George VI. Mary was supportive of her son, Edward, but could not understand why he would neglect his duties and abdicate. Mary took a keen interest in the upbringing of her granddaughters, Elizabeth and Margaret, the only children of George VI. She took them on excursions in London to art galleries and museums to compensate for their lack of an educational regime. During the Second World War, George VI wanted his mother to evacuate from London, and while she was hesitant to do so, she decided to live at Badminton House in Gloucestershire, the home of her niece, the Duchess of Beaufort. During the war, she visited troops and factories and directed the gathering of scrap materials. After the war, in June 1945, Mary returned to Marlborough House. Mary was an eager collector of objects and photos that had a royal connection. Most of the time, she obtained the objects by paying for them. On other occasions, she would express a desire for someone's possession and expect that that person would give it to her. In February 1952, the king died. By this point, half of her children were dead, with her son George having died in 1942 during an air crash. Her eldest granddaughter, Princess Elizabeth, Duchess of Edinburgh, ascended the throne as Queen Elizabeth II. Little over a year later, Mary died on the 24th of March 1953 in her sleep. Before her death, she had let it be known that the coronation should not be postponed should she die beforehand. Her body lay in state at Westminster Hall before she was buried beside her husband at St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. Born Elizabeth Angela Marguerite Bowes Lyon on the 4th of August 1900 in London, she was the ninth child of ten children born to Claude Bowes Lyon, the 14th Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn, and Cecilia Cavendish Bentick. She grew up in Glamis Castle and was educated by a governess. She started going to school at the age of eight in London and passed her Oxford local examination at the age of 13. On her 14th birthday, Britain went to war with Germany. Four of her older brothers served in the army. Her brother Fergus died while fighting in the Battle of Luce in 1915. Her other brother Michael was detained in a prisoner of war camp until the end of the war. Glamis Castle became a convalescent home for wounded soldiers during the war and Elizabeth helped run it. During her early 20s, Elizabeth grew close to Prince Albert Bertie, Duke of York and he proposed to her in 1921. However, she rejected the proposal as she did not want to lose her freedom. Queen Mary, Bertie's mother, met Elizabeth and was convinced that Elizabeth was the one who would make her son happy. Bertie proposed a further two times in 1922 and 1923. In 1923, Elizabeth agreed to marry Bertie and they were married on the 26th of April, 1923, in Westminster Abbey. Elizabeth began the tradition of leaving her wedding bouquet at the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior, a tradition still continued amongst royal brides today. After their wedding, they honeymooned in Paulinston Lacey, a manor house in Surrey, before going to Scotland, where she got whooping cough. Elizabeth had a charismatic aura about her, and did well on international and national tours. 
Her husband had quite a bad stammer, which affected his confidence and ability to do speeches, a necessity for his job. She found a speech and language therapist, Lionel Logue, to help him. In 1926, the couple's first child, Princess Elizabeth, was born. Their second child, Princess Margaret, was born in 1930. On the 20th of January 1936, Bertie's father, George V, died and Edward, the Prince of Wales, became Edward VIII. After only 11 months, Edward abdicated so he could marry Wallace Simpson, a divorcee. Bertie became king, George VI and Elizabeth became queen consort. Their coronation was held on the 12th of May 1937. Becoming king put a huge strain on Bertie, but Elizabeth remained a steadying and supporting force for the king. As king and queen, they made an international trip to France to increase the Anglo-French solidarity as Nazi Germany was becoming increasingly aggressive in their international relations. The couple also went to the USA and Canada to boost support in the event of a potential war with Germany. During the Second World War, the king and queen remained in England, living in Windsor Castle. Initially unpopular when visiting affected areas of London during the war, when Buckingham Palace was bombed, Elizabeth felt she could look the people in the face. Elizabeth was also given revolver training. After the war, the royal family visited South Africa in 1947. They postponed their trip in 1948 to Australia and New Zealand as the king's health was deteriorating. In 1951 and 1952, Elizabeth and her daughters did most of the public engagements for the king. On the 6th of February 1952, months after the king had received treatment for his lung cancer, the king died. At the age of 52, the queen was widowed. To differentiate between the new queen and the old queen, both named Elizabeth, the older of the two went by the title of the Queen Mother or as she was affectionately known by the public, the Queen Mum. Devastated by her husband's sudden death, she moved to Scotland, finding the countryside like a breath of fresh air and helping her to cope with her husband's sudden death. Eventually, she returned to public duties, keeping busy and being a supportive hand for the new Queen, her daughter. While Queen Elizabeth II went on tour of the Commonwealth in 1953 and 1954, Elizabeth acted as regent and also looked after her grandchildren. Elizabeth bought the Castle of May, a run-down castle that was in need of extensive work. Every year she would go there in August and October. Like most members of the British royal family, she also adored horse racing and owned a number of winning horses. During her life, Elizabeth had a number of bouts of cancer, managing to survive each attack. In 1966, she was diagnosed with colon cancer and in 1984 with breast cancer. For both, she received treatment. The Queen Mother was one of the most long-lived members of the British royal family. In her final years, she continued to work, last attending a public engagement at the recommissioning of HMS Ark Royal on the 22nd of November 2001. In December 2001, Elizabeth fractured her pelvis after a fall, but insisted on attending her husband's 50th memorial service in February 2002. Her daughter Margaret passed away on the 9th of February 2002 only three days later. Despite being quite frail at this point, she attended her daughter's funeral. Over the next few weeks, Elizabeth's health began to fail and she passed away in her sleep on the 30th of March 2002 with her daughter Elizabeth by her side. Her funeral was held on the 9th of April 2002. Prince Philip Duke of Edinburgh was the longest serving British consort in history, having been married to Elizabeth II from before her reign began until his death in 2021. Though born in Greece into two royal families, the Greek and Danish royal families, his family was exiled from Greece when he was only a baby. He lived and was educated in France, Germany and the UK 
and in 1939 he met his future wife, the then Princess Elizabeth. Prince Philip was born in Corfu, a Greek island, on the 10th of June 1921. The youngest of five children and the only son, his parents were Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark and Princess Alice of Battenberg, a great-granddaughter of Queen Victoria. In 1922, Prince Philip's uncle, Constantine I of Greece, abdicated and his father was banished from Greece. Philip's family moved to France and lived in a house lent to them by his aunt, Princess George of Greece and Denmark. In 1930, Prince Philip lived with his grandmother, Victoria Mountbatten, in Kensington Palace and with his uncle, George Mountbatten, in Berkshire. In the early 1930s, all of his sisters married German princes and moved to Germany. His mother was institutionalized in an asylum and his father moved to Monte Carlo. Philip had little contact with his family, especially his mother. In 1937, Prince Philip's favorite sister, Cecily, died in an airplane crash along with her husband, her sons and her newborn daughter. In 1938, George Mountbatten died from cancer and Lord Louis Mountbatten took guardianship of Philip. Philip was educated at a number of schools, including Gordonson School. In 1939, Philip completed his training for the Royal Navy and during the Second World War, he fought for the British. In 1939, Philip met Princess Elizabeth the eldest child of George VI, when the royal family visited the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth. On this faithful day, Elizabeth fell in love with Philip, and they began to send letters to each other. In 1946, Philip asked the king for permission to marry Elizabeth, and though the king did grant permission, he asked them to postpone any announcement or formal engagement until after Elizabeth's 21st birthday in 1947. In March 1947, Philip renounced his Greek and Danish titles and took his mother's surname, Mountbatten. In July of that year, Philip and Elizabeth's engagement was announced. In October, Philip was officially received into the Church of England. Before the wedding, Philip was given the title of Duke of Edinburgh, and on the 20th November 1947, the couple were married in Westminster Abbey. Due to his sisters being married to Nazis and German princes, he was unable to invite them to the wedding. Philip and Elizabeth honeymooned in Broadlands. Philip and Elizabeth lived in Clarence House for most of the early years of their marriage occasionally leaving the country when Philip's job in the Navy required him to. The couple's first two children, Charles and Anne, who were born in 1948 and 1950 respectively, were born during the life of George VI. Their youngest two children, Andrew and Edward, born in 1960 and 1964 respectively, born almost a decade after Princess Anne. On the 6th of February 1952, while in Kenya, Philip learned of the news that his father-in-law, George VI, was dead and broke the news to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was now Queen of the United Kingdom. The coronation was held in June 1953. The question of the royal house's name came up very quickly. At the time of Elizabeth's ascending the throne, women traditionally took their husband's surname. However, this was not the case for Elizabeth and Philip. The house's name remained Windsor, and only in 1960 did Elizabeth declare that their male line descendants, who were not styled as prince or princess, would take the surname Mountbatten Windsor. As consort, Philip supported his wife and accompanied her on many official visits and events. In 1956, the Duke founded the Duke of Edinburgh's award, and in 1956 also, he opened the Summer Olympics in Melbourne. 
In 1957, amidst rumors that the Queen and her husband were drifting apart, the Queen granted her husband the style of a Prince of the United Kingdom and also appointed him to the Privy Council for Canada. During his time as a working member of the royal family, Philip was patron of 800 organisations. In August 2017, Philip retired from public duty after completing 22,219 solo engagements. He only made occasional public appearances after retiring for events such as the weddings of his grandchildren. On the 9th of April 2021, Prince Philip died at Windsor Castle with his wife beside him. He was 99 years old. His official cause of death was old age. Due to COVID restrictions being in place at the time, only 30 people could attend his funeral. As such, none of his great-grandchildren were able to attend. Like his wife, Philip was known for his longevity. In 2009, he became the longest-serving British royal consort and the oldest ever male member of the British royal family in 2013. On the 17th of April 2021, Prince Philip's funeral was held at St George's Chapel and he was interred in the Royal Vault. In 2021, at the time of his death, he was the third longest lived member of the British royal family after his mother-in-law, the Queen Mother, and Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester. Born Camilla Rosemary Shand, Queen Camilla was born on the 17th of July 1947 in London to Major Bruce Shand and the Honourable Rosalind Cubitt. She grew up in Sussex and she has one younger sister called Annabel Elliot and she also had one younger brother named Mark. One of her great grandmothers Alice Keppel was a mistress of Edward VII of the United Kingdom. Her mother volunteered at various charities and her father made various business ventures after retiring from the army. From a young age, Queen Camilla loved to read and ride horses. Her childhood was mostly happy. At the age of five, Camilla was sent to Drumbrells, a co-educational school before attending Queen's Gate at the age of 10. She was bright, lively and confident and was popular amongst the students. After completing one O level in 1964, she left to attend Montfortile Finishing School in Switzerland. After this, she studied French and French literature at the University of London Institute in Paris for six months. In 1965, Camilla was a debutante in London and soon shared a flat in Kensington with a friend. In her early adult years, she worked as a secretary in the West End and as a receptionist in Mayfair. In the early 1960s, Camilla met Andrew Parker Bowles and they had an on and off relationship for years. Eventually, they married on the 4th of July, 1973. Several members of the British royal family attended the wedding, including the Princess Royal, Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. Camilla and Andrew made their home in Wiltshire and they had two children, Tom and Laura. Though her husband and children were Catholic, Camilla remained Anglican and did not convert. In 1995, the couple divorced. Camilla's mother, Rosaline, died in July 1994 from osteoporosis and accompanied with the end of her first marriage, that year was a particularly difficult time for Camilla. Camilla met the then Prince Charles, Prince of Wales, in 1971. Andrew and Camilla had already broken up and Andrew was dating Princess Anne. They met for the first time at the home of their friend, Lucia Santa Cruz and became close friends. Their friendship developed into a romantic relationship and as their relationship became more serious, each introduced the other to their respective families. The relationship was put on hold while Charles was in the Navy, but it ended. Camilla did not wait for Charles, as she was not sure he would want to be with her once he left the Navy. 
The royal family had made it clear that Camilla was not seen as a suitable wife for a future king, and Charles had not made it clear to Camilla that her to wait. They stayed in contact, and by the mid-1980s, they were having an affair. Their affair became public knowledge in the press in 1992 with the publication of Diana, Her True Story, a book about Charles's wife, Diana. The media vilified Camilla because of this. Her reputation never truly recovered, but after marrying Charles in 2005 and after much PR improvement, her reputation has somewhat recovered. After Charles divorced Diana in 1996 and Diana's subsequent death in 1997, Charles and Camilla began a relationship, which was made official to the public in 1999. In February 2005, Charles and Camilla's engagement was announced. Charles gave Camilla a ring which had belonged to his grandmother, the Queen Mother. As both were divorced, the prospect of Charles marrying Camilla was seen as controversial. But they were given consent by the Queen, the Government and the Church of England. They were wed on the 9th of April 2005 in a civil ceremony followed by a religious service of blessing. None of their parents attended a civil ceremony, but their parents did attend the service of blessing. Following their wedding, Camilla took the title of Duchess of Cornwall. Legally, she was the Princess of Wales. However, out of respect for Diana, the previous Princess of Wales, and Charles's first wife, Camilla took one of the feminine versions of Charles's subsidiary titles, the Duke of Cornwall. Camilla became a grandmother for the first time in 2007. She has five grandchildren, Lola, Eliza, Gus, Louis and Frederick. She is also a stepmother to Charles's children, William and Harry, and a step-grandmother to their children. Camilla has a number of interests and is a patron of several organisations including Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, Maggie's Cancer Caring Centres and the London Chamber Orchestra. In 1994, Camilla became a member of the National Osteoporosis Society following the death of her mother from the disease. Her grandmother had also died from the disease in 1986. In 2006, she launched the Big Bone Walk campaign, leading 90 children and people with osteoporosis for a 10-mile walk and climb around Loch Muick in Scotland to raise money for the charity. It raised £200,000 and continues every year to this day. On the 1st of January 2022, Queen Elizabeth II made Camilla a Royal Lady of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. And a month later, the Queen made it clear that she wished for Camilla to be known as the Queen Consort. Upon her son ascending the throne, Camilla became the Queen Consort on the 8th of September 2022, following the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Her husband became known as Charles III. On the 10th of September 2022, Camilla attended the Proclamation Council of Charles III as a witness. Camilla was crowned Queen on the 6th of May 2023 alongside her husband.